Okay. Okay. So everyone, um, welcome to um, this session, which is around eConsult. So <clears throat> I'm probably going to lead on the on the slides and the presentation, and Alex is going to co-lead and jump in um, uh, with the chat and just um, um, making it as interactive as possible. <clears throat> We've also got Finn, um, who's going to try and manage this as well. Um, our, our thoughts here is that some of you may have seen some of the council members meetings when we've done little bite-sized snippets of IT. Um, this session is the first of a few sessions planned, thinking that we can take those bites bigger, maybe with a bit more time um, in this session and a big wider audience. Can we explore it um, a little wider? So this session's um, on eConsult, we've got up to an hour. <clears throat> thinking about what we may want to cover, um, we thought we'd divide it into two chunks really. Just to give you a chunk as a quick refresh on eConsult, on what may be happening next, development, what might you see, <clears throat> things you might not know about functionality, particularly highlighting things on Elin Standard. Um, so if you're aware about what you need to achieve for Elin Standard, and then let's then do a second chunk really just talking about in practice what can we all learn from each other because we're all new to this um, and we're all learning every day. <clears throat> I just want to highlight a few common questions that I think people are asking at the moment and these may seem negative in nature but I would really urge now if people can hit the chat we can flex this session to really tackle what you want to want to cover in this. We've got a wide audience, clinicians, receptions on this call. So can I now really, really push everyone just to put their questions in the chat? Um, Alex will monitor it and we can just try and flex um, what we cover in this in this time. <clears throat> OK, so these user queries that we can answer some of them right now as some of these top questions. Unlimited demand, we'll talk about this later on about what could our strategies be um, in, as individual practices or cross practices to tackle this. Can you turn off e-consults? In reality, no, um, you can't turn it off. You can't switch it off. There are some workarounds that some practices could consider. And again, we can talk about that later. Um, how long have we got e-consult for? For Elin as a CCG, um, we've got a two year contract with this platform. So we all started generally in March. Some practices went a bit earlier on. But think of it as you've got two years that it's a paid product by the CCG. We're under contract contract with that provider. After two years, who knows um, what will happen? And we also don't know who will fund it. Will it be practices? Will it be the CCG? Um, you may know that it's part of your GP contract that since April this year, you had to provide an online consultation option. Um, so it's part of your contract. You're meant to give 25% of your appointments through an online consultation. Um, can you switch to an alternative product? You can, you could switch to whatever product you wanted to use, but it wouldn't be funded. So the CCG has funded eConsult. You could switch it off and switch on an approved alternative, but that would be your own practice that funds it. Another top question is about do we need to keep responding by the next working day to e-consults? Can't it be longer? And we'll try and pick that up as well and about interoperability. So that's some of the top questions. There is a user guide. I'm assuming that all of our practices are up and running and ready. Um, I know that and, and this this webinar is really pitched to all of those on system one. Um, so um, there is a user guide. I'll make sure we'll upload it in the chat at the end of this um, so you've got it. Keep it safe in case you think there's anything um, you need, a, need to um, uh, tackle. OK, um, so I've seen a few things. We've got a question about AirMid, which I think Alex has said that we're thinking of doing a so whole session on AirMid, about turning off functionality over the core hours. Um, formally, um, if you think about where patients access um, eConsults, most of our patients are going through the practice website. It is possible, technically, to remove the banner at periods of time. Um, I'm not saying that's what, something we'd encourage, but if you were really um, drowning or you had a workaround, if you remove the banner, um, that would reduce a lot of the flow in um, because most of your patients are hitting that banner as the link into it. Um, if they've discovered the direct link into your eConsult platform, that obviously removing the banner won't turn it off, but that's one workaround. The NHS app is now integrated into eConsult. The NHS app knows that your practice is live with eConsult and that you can't really turn off. I think over the over time and over the future, more and more patients will come into the eConsult through the app and that will be less controllable. So if we think about this as a top flow um, about how um, how people present in. Um, so, you know, when they come in, you would help that eConsult redirects them to self-care or local services that so they don't even hit your farm, um, your, 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 your service. Um, we, we could debate about how, how successful that is. 
again looking at that process you would also feel that some get streamed out to go to um, an acute setting that they're too urgent they can't just um, wait for your practice to um, to respond to them by the next working day so that may be that they get told you know and they end up pre either just calling the practice because they need a response straight away or they call 111 or 999 as they're directed so i think hopefully all of us will probably know that that's generally how the flow works at top level this is just to give you the idea of how the NHS app functionality works, because I think increasingly our reception staff and all of our staff are going to end up navigating our patients as that becomes the, the, the front digital front end to how they access care at the practice. And, um, you know, when they go in to either check their symptoms, if they ask for if they choose the option, ask for GP for advice that can trigger them into an e-consult. Um, if they're trying to book an appointment again, if they look for asking for advice, that could trigger them into an e-consult. If they look for a click on additional GP services, that could trigger an e-consult down the admin paths. Um, so again, um, that's how they can access it. And we've seen that big banner. A little bit of controversy, the, the company, if you notice, have changed the word in to say at the moment um, that you will give them advice and treatment by the next working day. We have responded back as Northwest London CCGs to say that that is not what we think is acceptable and that we want the word in um, changed back to that we will respond to them in the next working day. Um, again, we can pick that up later on, but when we think about response, that doesn't mean you dealt with everything for that patient. It might even be to respond, say you've looked at the consult, you triage them and you'll book them in for a routine consultation in a couple of weeks time. So that is a response. So um, just want to point that out if in case you have spotted the word and your abandoning has changed, that that should be changing back shortly. Um, I think we probably have seen this flow about administrators for e-consults um, and then the navigation just to pick up, up that with children you're all probably by default switched on that you have uh, people can submit consultations for children you do have the ability to turn that off um, personally we didn't really encourage it um, we probably didn't highlight that option to you when you mobilize but you do have that option to turn off um, children and children is defined as six months to 18 years I don't know about you but I think it's quite um, quite old-fashioned the user interface difficult to navigate difficult for patients to find their problems um, and it's a long form type process so you know at, 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 at our practice we've had um, reception say they've, they've got people to use it once and then the patient comes back and says oh, I don't want to go for that process again and refusing to do an e-consult next time you're going to see this user interface change over the next few weeks even the next couple of months the company have said it um, the user interface is changing. It's going to come more like as a screen by screen uh, uh, process. So, you know, where a patient's clicking through a screen by screen, they're not seeing a long form that they scroll through to to complete. I think the user experience will be better. Um, probably, though, you could argue that that will end up to more, more, um, more e-consults um, being submitted. And the search functionality should also be a bit more logical. So I don't know about you, but um, I find that they can never find um, this section here. So if you look here, need to complete a review, it's hidden right in the bottom right of that long list. Um, I, you know, I think it's um, near impossible for a patient to to spot that easily. So how can we make that better? We'll touch on that in a moment. So a couple of other updates you've probably seen um, nationally NHS X NHS E has really communicated how we've got to be tighter with photos uh, about the consent process, not having intimate photographs submitted by patients um, and making sure that the patient knows this has been added to their records. So eConsult did refresh this um, about a month or so ago. Um, so you've probably you may not have spotted that, but um, these are some screenshots showing how the questions are improved to really try to make it clear about photo uploads. Um, they're also trying to add the ability to upload photos to more pathways. Um, again, like um, I don't know, you've probably seen the frustration that patients can't upload it in what we would have thought was an obvious pathway. And then maybe we end up sending them an Accurex link or lots of other links to try and capture photos, which is just adding more steps and more um, issues. OK, that was a first rattle through for a first wave of issues. Um, just picking up at the chat. Um, Alex, I don't know if there's any points we want to pick up from a chat at this stage. Um, so we've got um, quite a few questions I've been answering as we go along, but uh, some some uh, colleagues are asking whether you can turn off e-consult at specific times, um, uh, for example, out, out of hours to avoid uh, uh, huge numbers of e-consults uh, coming in uncontrollably. Um, it, it, they, so like I said, the banner can be picked off. The company 
I think they have alluded to that some areas they have offered such a solution at weekends, but the moment they're not promoting it and not saying it. So it's definitely a conversation we can have in the future with eConsult. And we have had that conversation already about some of those options. Um, bear in mind that obviously we have, um, you know, most of Northwest London, if not entirely Northwest London at the moment is using eConsult. There's only a handful of practices that have gone with other products. Clinique, there's a cluster in Harrow and there's a few, um, in Ealing we've obviously got Ask My GP, which has been run by Florence Road um, as their own preferred product. Um, so the majority of Northwest London at this point in time is using eConsult. So we have regular meetings with the company and we have raised it. Um, they're just not promoting it. So I think the workaround of removing the banner is your top thing, but that's not a complete turn off. Um, the app would still work. OK, um, I just want to say about the pictures thing, because I've seen that on the chat. Um, just quickly about the eConsult version. Um, the eConsult does not save the images on their server at this point in time. They serve it in for a short time, for a few hours, when if they're thinking that it hasn't reached you as a report and they're trying to resend it, but they're not storing these images. So when you receive the eConsult, if you felt that this was not um, appropriate, then you've got the option about what you do about filtering it, deleting it from the records. Um, I appreciate you could say that there's still a, a, a a trail on system one. Um, if you compare it to Accurex, Accurex when you send when they send you a photo, it stays on the Accurex servers at this point in time for seven years. Um, so there is an issue that even if you didn't save it in the record, it's there is a an that it is saved somewhere in the cloud um, for those years. Um, Accurex is trying to comply, is it's just complying with NHSX requirements. I imagine that if nationally that becomes that evolves, um, those those companies would also evolve to to um to be consistent. Um, um, with with eConsult, there's probably more safety net in with, with all those things I've just shown you about the messaging, about what the patient is actually um, consenting to if they do upload photos. With Accurex, I mean, again, we'll pick it up in different webinars. Unless you make sure you put templates and things, um, you don't have that governance. If you get them to email photos in, again, you don't have as much governance about did you make it clear to them. So maybe some people say that eConsult is a safer way of getting photos sent to a practice. OK, um, um, we talked about clinical governance. I can see on the chat about clinical governance. Um, at this point in time, um, eConsult has done uh, over 3 million um, online consultations across over 3,000 practices. I've looked at all their serious incidents and um, the couple that have happened have still been relatively minor, which harm didn't happen. Um, for example, someone going for an asthma review and reading severe asthma and just putting it into free text or you know chest pain scenarios. And usually it comes down to them free texting stuff in, which is not um, um, being AI uh, using artificial intelligence to process it. That's the main main aspect. Um, OK, um, can you give me one moment? Because I can hear that there's a sound issue. OK, can we can we can we just quickly um, can you just one second? Can, OK, what? Um, give me one second. I think if there's a, a disturbance. Sorry, is there okay. background noise? OK, is Shankar, this? yeah, take your time. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else has their uh, mic on, but uh, please can you mute if you're if you're not speaking? OK, so I'm just moving um, to try and avoid. OK, right, so digital standard. Um, has everyone um, looked at um, even standard? I know it's a big, long document and there's a few points to emphasize. Um, and the, this is really the next section is just going to quickly show the same concept which is picked up in um, in the uh, uh, um, in, in the digital standard. They're all asking you, um, can you think about um, them doing a chronic disease review template? Um, that's what they're all um, basically flagging as a as a as an option. So in mental health, it's asking you, can you do a PHQ-9 GAD-7 potential review using eConsult? Can you try it with diabetes? Can you try maybe an eConsult um, diabetes review in respiratory? Again, asthma, COPD and in hypertension it's a way to collect um, blood pressure readings. So where do we find it? So these are all the templates that they've got available. So these are ones that you tend to probably more likely to push it to the patient rather than the patient activating it. Um, but remember we said that if we go back a bit, it's difficult for them to find it. It's lost in that box need to complete a review. So it's not a, it's not easy to find it. Um, so if we go back uh, again, how can we help them to find it? 
there are direct links to go directly to that review and those links those you are name dot web gp dot com and then really the condition so here's an example you know from cloister road surgery our link to go to the hypertension review is cloister road surgery dot web gp dot com forward slash consult hypertension review not easy is it um long long links and multiple links so if we think about how we do this first start this does not replace your whole review process um did first review process rather than a complete replacement. And if you look at the templates, you'll probably make your own decisions about how useful or not it is. Those URL links, um, we imagine you probably would text it to the patient. Um, you can use websites like Bitly to shorten up those links so they're, they're easier to fit into a text message. Um, that's an example from a screenshot here that says, you how to do an example. So you could just send, for example, a message like this. Maybe you set them up as presets on system one. Maybe you set them up on your Accurex templates as presets. So you have a couple of options um, to how to get it through to the um, to the to the um, to the, the patient. So I don't know if that makes sense. Um, if we go back to these digital standards, I really just want to emphasize if you look at the wording, we're honestly just looking for you to try it. We're not asking to say that this is the best thing since sliced bread, do it for every single patient. So, you know, PHQ GAD 7s, do you find that asking them to do the anxiety or depression review, maybe you build it into your repeat prescribing process when they're asking for a repeat antidepressant, do you just do that? Is it better or easier than what you're doing at the moment? Could that be an option? If you think with any of this, it's absolutely awful. All you need to do is feedback and discuss it in your PCN and we're just looking for your reflections and your learning. We, we're encouraging not to just leave this product on um, that you've never had time to look at it and then two years later when the contract's about to end you suddenly realise you could have done this. That's the whole aim of the digital standard. Um, and so mental health I do think it's quite useful. Diabetes I think Alex and I would say it's probably very not very useful. It's just capturing maybe their ice their ideas concerns and expectations it's not that helpful for more the practical steps of of the review um, respiratory disease um, again it can be can be useful um, and hypertension I actually think is really useful to collect the blood pressure readings because it averages out the readings for you as well so they can put multiple readings in and eConsult will average it for you and you get it coming in that way but it is just to have a look at it and make your own decision Let, we capacity so you managing um, demand capacity. We're in strange times with COVID too, so you've probably seen that eConsult does give you some data. The company is looking to make that dashboard, that information more accessible to you, and you get patient feedback. And I think it is useful to know because we're all doing this in a new way. Um, are we doing it well or not? You know, are your GPs or your staff um, responding to the patients well, or are we having to learn new skills? So do have a look at it and, and share it with your practice staff. You get quantitative comments as well. Interoperability. So probably one of the concerns that we said right the questions, this product is not very interoperable, is it? It arrives to system one if you're lucky. It's all just um, not coded. Um, you know, responding to the patient isn't integrated in. Um, so yeah, it can be frustrating. You know, we really would have hoped for a lot more. You may be expected like a seamless integrated product and this is not that. But let's look at their first attempt at this. Um, it's the toolbar. I think today you're not an IT company unless you launch a toolbar. You just have no street credibility uh, in the world today. So we've all seen the Acurex chain toolbar, which has saved our life, I think. Um, if anyone hasn't seen it, um, they probably won't understand the next few scratch. But eConsult have launched a toolbar. You can download it from their website, um, but also the IT team are going to start to um, offer the, um, the installation across practices. Um, I'm going to be blunt here. Um, you're going to be disappointed. So let's just look at how this works. Um, it looks like um, the Acurex one, but it, do, it just doesn't do um, much functionality at this stage. So you have these tabs, the button. So if you look at the left one, the first one is just a link to their news items. So just a rolling feed from the the next tab, um, that sort of speech bubble one, that accesses your um, 
e consult post consult a messaging platform so if you follow the setup instruction you probably already added a link to your system one toolbar but that enables patient directly um, um sorry um so let me just move again if the voice is so i've, I've got real um internet connectivity issues hold on okay let me try again uh okay is that is that better i hope Seems so better yes thank okay you. i'm really sorry it's just uh, just i think my my internet has just okay we're sick i'm just gonna plug in okay um so with this um functionality that's just a quicker link to your um staff to respond but it's probably not that much um better than the link on your system one toolbar if you put it there um this is a bit that probably we need to think about is the video consultation function we're all using accurx um you've used accurx it was simple it was quick it was free you've seen now the email from the company that it will become more of a paid product from april 2021 um, we don't know at this point about the finances of it and um, um, this is the product that eConsult offer for video consultation it is included in the costing that we've paid for for that two years um, so you log in with your nhs mail account so that's the first bit on the left hand side picture then you can actually, um, it's a bit fiddly, but you either you can either send a link for now, starting a video consultation right now, or you can send them at a future appointment or date. So something that Accurex can't do, um, so you could think of that as a good thing, but it is fiddly. It's not interoperable, so you actually have to put the telephone number manually in and click a button to invite the um, patient. And on the right, I've just shown you how it looks. It comes up through the toolbar. It's not a separate website that or web browser that opens up with the video consultation. And I literally was testing it just before um, this webinar. So it's it's OK, but it's um, I, I, I just think being blunt, there's no interoperability for most of your staff. They're not going to want to use this compared to Accurex at this point in time, but we just need to watch the space. So the hope with this whole toolbar is this is version one. The company hopes that it will develop and become more interoperable um, over over time. So you just want to be aware that it exists, but um, um, but just pace how much you engage with it. I know I'm rattling through lots of lots of different things here. Um, so you've probably seen that we talked about the development that they're going to change the user interface. They've got this toolbar, this interoperability. Now we need to talk about eHubs. Um, so you know we talked at the beginning about how we kind of cope with all these endless e-consults. The, the journey with eConsult in Northwest London started in Brent. Brent started a couple of years ago with eConsult and they then formed eHubs where they stream the eConsults from the practices into one centre, one um, centre um, service and that service um, then manages those eConsults on behalf of the practices. Personally, I think it's a bit like saying you're rolling out out of hours care in hours where we're not coping with the scale of volume of work we're doing and how do we work efficiently. Um, I think that hub uses a combination of G GP sessional, non-sessional. Um, the view also is that if they just do more e-consults, they become slicker, their skills develop, they become faster, they become more trained in their how to deal with online consultations. So I think in this forum, really the genuine question we need to ask ourselves is, should we be doing similar in Elin? Should we be budding up? Is this a way to manage COVID pressures? Is this a way to manage if our staff go off sick and we're struggling? Um, the PCN clinical directors have been asked this question, so are exploring this throughout. So I, I would say if you think this is a solution, have those conversations with either neighbouring practices, your network or even wider. Um, and how do we then how would we then build it? Um, all the different CCGs in Northwest London are all exploring e-hubs in different ways. Um, and most of them are using eConsult. The company have explained that they will have increased functionality to deal with the flows. That toolbar will probably have additional functionality to deal with it. And and therefore the company, um, although, the, although at the moment there may be lots of manual steps to make it happen, we would have to have conversations about how do we use our system one functionality appointments remote booking across ourselves and we would have to look at what the company does in terms of its functionality to respond back to patients. Um, and this is a real example when you're thinking about um, workload. This is what I do um, in real world in cloister road surgery. So for a few months now, um, you know, when COVID hit, um, our extended access is delivered purely via eConsult. So 
over the weekend, I will log in remotely, I will look for the e-consults, I will book them and manage them um, as a practice. We thought it was more resource effective. We didn't have to open our door. We didn't have to drag in admin staff who didn't really want to work those hours. And it just dealt with the workload to make maybe the days lighter. Could this be done more at scale? You know, is this is this how um, how we could deal with demand and across practices? You know, um, so I think I've rattled through a section. We've now gone 25 minutes into the e-consult um, presentation. Um, the next section, I think, will be more about, let's talk about more practical tips and experiences. So before we move on, should we put, is there any burning questions or things that we want to cover? Um, I saw Adam's comment in firstly about, um, um, by the way, um, the coffin was my kid, <laughs> so um, she's been COVID negative, but she's got a bad asthma. So just to let you know that, that was my kid in the background. And the um, Adam, I mean, do you want to come off mute? Do you want to share any experiences? Because you were present when you looked at the selection. I mean, you, the, the Federation was involved in the selection of the product, looking at hubs, looking at what Brent did. Do you want to just comment a bit about what you thought from what you yeah. did? Can, can you hear me first of all? Y yeah, I can. Can you hear me? <laughs> OK, yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure what Brent is doing at the moment because it's a year since we did this sort of initial analysis and discussion. But their initial e-hub that operated e-consult was just taking the overflow from routine booked surgeries within the, the Brent system. And I think it was only in one particular area. Uh, they may have changed it, but because of the way they launched the system, they weren't using all the availability that that comes with uh, e-consult. So in other words, patients weren't initially going through the e-consult access in order to be able to get an appointment. Um, what was happening that the vast majority of patients were just routinely booking appointments. And then if there were additional ones after all the surgeries were booked, they were pushed through e-consult and then on to the e-hub. I'm not sure if it's changed because, as I said, that was a year ago. Um, I think I think they've um, I think it has changed, but I think it's changed in both ways. I think in some ways. Um, about the funding of capacity, um, but I think at the moment they're they've upped it a little bit in terms of capacity. They tend to do more um, afternoon, like the, they they clear the e consults more in the afternoon. Um, but I think this is a an ever changing um, um, situation. I'm aware that there may be some members of the digital first team who cover um, Northwest London on this call. So I don't know if anyone wants to come off mute to give uh, an update on what the e hub situation is across the CCGs. Is anyone there from Digital First? If not, we'll move on. Um, I can give you some brief ones. Um, one CCG, Central London, they were looking at just trying to initially do a hub that just focused on admin um, 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 e-consults. Personally, uh, we thought that that probably isn't the right approach because most admin things probably do need to stick with the practice and the volumes are relatively low. Um, the company also probably flagged that as well. They think it's more the clinical ones that need to go to a hub and the admin stays that. So, but they're in early stages of, of, of their hub. Um, OK, right. So um, let's now go on to the second section about us genuinely trying to share experiences and tips and problems. I would really urge that we hit the chat because if you are having a problem or frustration, we can all just think it through um, and, and really focus on what we want to focus on. First problem is, um, I think, promotion or thinking about promotion. And I, and I, and I think we are on a double edge here. We're a little bit fearful that we get overwhelmed. Um, overwhelmed with um, endless e-consult that we can't stop. But also in this current triage model, um, personally, um, you know, you're letting the system take the strain rather than the doctor. If if the patient in their own time has com completed that e-consult, um, the doctor's um, phone assessments or not even phone, just their triage process will hopefully be quicker. And then I, I would also say safer because, um, you know, we're all humans. We're all going to make mistakes. I'm not saying that e-consult is perfect, but are we going to just forget asking certain questions? Could we miss red flag questions? Are we just getting exhausted and burnt out from endless remote working? So if, if your reception staff do push e-consult first, could it just help with the burnout of um, a bit of a triage process being done in the patient's time? Um, so it could save that consultation time. So that's one thing. Reception are definitely key here. Um, if, if you're looking at your practice process and patients are looking for urgent um, 
attention, urgent um, consultations, maybe really build an e-consult as your triage process saying, look, you have to go for e-consult will help. Think of all your um, marketing, text messaging. I've stuffed the um, invas um, sorry, the e-consult video onto the uh, media screens, but obviously a lot of media screens are shut and down and all patients aren't in our practices. Think of everything, your auto um, replies to emails, um, your practice email account, you know, really close the gateways to them emailing about problems, push them down e-consult, think of text messaging. And if you have social media accounts, you know, Twitter, Facebook or Instagram for your practice, then then remember about using that as well. What if they can't consider uh, doing e consult? They, they don't have a computer, they're refusing to do it. Um, there is a template made by the company that's designed for your reception staff. They're taking a phone call to try and do some basic information collection. Um, let's let Alex come in here because I think he's been using it longer than, well, certainly longer than my experience. So Alex, what are your thoughts on how your practice have found this? So, um, yeah, it's. It, I think the journey for our practice um, uh, is probably a little bit longer in terms of e-consults than, than most other healing practices. We started using the system uh, in about October last year, so way before COVID. And actually, you're completely right. It, it, it's a totally uh, altered mindset um, compared to normal systems and processes within practices. Uh, and compared to what we feel normal appointments should be. Um, so we pushed really hard um, in, in order to, because we saw the potential benefit that it might have in terms of actually improving our sanity. Uh, our clinics were always full with appointments. There was a two or three a week waiting time for routine appointments. It just felt that we couldn't cope. Um, so from the beginning, we just got the team uh, on board with us in terms of um, uh, believing in the concept uh, and particularly the admin and reception teams are crucial in terms of actually helping patients understand that uh, pr providing a uh, uh, or submitting an e-consult into the practice is actually a really efficient way of getting their problem dealt with far faster than waiting two or three weeks uh, for a routine appointment. And of course, initially, over the first two, three, four months, we really struggled. Uh, there were lots of arguments. Patients didn't quite understand what they had to do. A lot of patients refused. Um, it, it, it was uh, really hard to keep everyone motivated to actually keep promoting uh, the product. And then COVID happened. And actually, the timing was perfect in that as we were struggling to get everyone on boarded with this and, and and to believe why it could be efficient and helpful for them um, all of a sudden patients started using it much more um, uh, and they needed very little prompting from reception of course there's always a cohort of patients that, 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 that would refuse or felt unable to do this but as you said there is a solution for patients like this where um, your reception and admin teams could could download the um, e-consult light templates and actually do a very quick triage on the phone uh, using the questionnaire that's on the screen now uh, and literally put a basic e-consult onto your list uh, or onto any uh, clinician's list. Um, so there is a way around it. But then, of course, there are a minority of patients where you just won't be able to do this. The, the, the issue isn't suitable for an e-consult and those patients we just accept they will probably need a phone call first and and then a potentially a face-to-face -face appointment or some alternative way of dealing with their issue. Um, I think in terms of volumes again um, because our practice had started probably earlier than most practices in Ealing uh, we've seen our utilization of e-consult uh, increase massively so um, probably about more than 90% of all our incoming queries in the practice and requests uh, are via e-consult now. Um, and so that um, has actually um, resulted in, in a huge volume of work for us in that as, and I think that's what other practices will find the more and more that they use this system uh, and their patients use the system is that once patients learn to, to, to submit e-consults, it's far easier for them to then um, 
at any time of day submit any consult about a problem that they perhaps wouldn't otherwise have called the practice about and that increases the amount of queries coming in so we've struggled over the last few months and especially since about august september time when activity seems to have skyrocketed uh, we, we've struggled with numbers that are far higher than what we would see at this time of year and it's not even winter yet so um, we've had to create various i guess uh, innovative ways within the practice of how we deal with that increased demand so we, we've changed our session types we've changed the duration of appointments um, because actually a lot of the time dealing with e-consults doesn't take 10 minutes it takes a lot less uh, time um, uh, and making the decision about what to do with a particular e-consult is actually f a fairly quick process uh, and you can then uh, filter uh, and book the, the appointment in whichever way you see fit. So lots of ways of doing it. Um, uh, I'd be happy to hear any other issues that, that, that the group have in terms of their volumes and how they cope. Um. I want to pick up a couple of com comments on the chat. So Sarind has written about um, how e-consults are booked into appointments so it defeats the object. So first of all, um, it doesn't quite defeat the purpose. I know it's frustrating. Um, remember, and it's, it's always great to have Adam on these webinars. You know, <laughs> it's always great. But basically, remember your contract. You have to show as part of your national contract that at least 25% of your appointments are on, online. Um, so you actually would want to put a lot of them into your appointments for that reason. If you look at Enin standard and around access, we, we count these as well as appointments. So we totally understand there's a workload impact on this. And really, um, when you look at what's happened for this year, standards it's sort of accepting it it's trying to make um, us count all the impact of covid and online consultations you know allowing time for video allowing time for um phone calls um so i do think a lot of them will end up as appointments and that's also how you would manage your workload with your gps um i think as 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 we get more and more experience we could then debate well what doesn't need to go as an appointment um so just want to flag that as one point in, in the workload debate um okay so um sorry just gonna okay there's a couple of other templates you may be aware of so first of all the, all these templates are published that e-consult light template is published on system ones so you don't even need to download it it's there um the northwest london team have designed also an, an a, a, a template for entry we haven't pushed this hard because you know um, we don't want to force people to do things in a particular way but i think when you look at it one of the bits about the data protect data collection is it's quite helpful to know what actually was the outcome. You know, so what was the outcome of your e-consult? How many did you turn to face to face? How many ended up being further calls? How many just were closed without any contact, um, you know, over video or phone, just remotely by either a response or text? Um, so that was one thing that is captured by the template. Plus it's got some basic. So there's an admin temp side to the template. There's a clinical side to the template. And there's actually also a hub side to the template that's been developed um, based, particularly based on the experiences of the CCGs that are doing hub working with e-consults. Um, there's also a thought that this isn't just an e-consult um, template. It becomes more of an online template so we can cope with other things. It could be useful just even if you're doing a video consult. So just awareness of that template is there and as a practice you may want to discuss how how you don't code things again a few glitches and things you'll be frustrated yep we're all frustrated by that blank page one raised it lots of times with the company they say it's not their problem and, and i really don't get it i almost imagine that there must be a page break somewhere in that document structure that that first page and then um the other frustration probably your secretaries have said about or admin team have said how when you try to export it and attach it to an ERS referral it just comes across blank and you end up having to export it and convert the file format so these are frustrations that we've raised with the company we've not really got much progress to be frank so apologies for that identity so on the chat we heard about people accessing your link that are not registered with your um, practice and I've already seen on the chat that one person said about just checking your link to your practice because remember they kind of come for your unique that banner kind of links you to a unique link for your website but there is a bit about how do you confirm the patient's identity and how you respond so the first thing is remember from that training that they gave uh, that very simple module you do not know who this patient is anyone could visit your practice website pretend to be anyone 
and just think about that. So when you're confirming the identity, the first thing I'd say is just the common mistake is the parent consulting for their child and system one will give you two options, parent and child. You could easily click into the wrong one as the admin team that processes this and you've saved the child's console into the parents. So that's a simple mistake that could be made, but just think about the identity and um, think, um, do you really know who they are when you respond? Personally, as a practice process, I personally would not just look at the contact details they put on that form. I would go and contact them using the details on that you've got on system one. And then if you did think that their details were different and you wanted to change their details, you know, have they put a do you mobile number? Do you go for a, on the e-consult that's not on your system one thing? You know, have that conversation, maybe verify it with the patient, maybe vouch their identity before you update the system one to reflect any change. Um, so this decision making to be or not to be, I think one of the most critical points in this is once you get the e-consult, does this go to clinician or not? And at the beginning, you probably have put everything onto clinicians and looking at Sarinda's feedback about, you know, does it eat into your appointment slots? That's probably the debate. Can it go to different people? Can you triage it to different members of the team? Um, and, you know, are these members of the team people that they could go to? And particularly those chronic disease templates. Remember what we just said at the beginning that we want um, people to explore chronic disease templates? You know, could all of those go as a first check to maybe an HCA as a first check in a process, those hypertension templates? Or, you know, do you do a bulk text for um, collection? So if you think for chronic disease, you really got to think about it. And I think the admin queries, um, again, do they go straight to your secretary? Do they go straight to someone else? So um, uh, before we go to this section, this is about communication. Alex, do you want to come in with any of your learning about um, how you've streamed things in your practice? Yeah, so I mean, I, I think this this is uh, going to vary between different practices, but again, it relates to uh, your individual systems and processes, but also to volume of queries coming in. So uh, uh, this I'm not suggesting is necessarily the right thing to do, uh, but the way I've personally coped with, with um, I think one day last week, um, I think I dealt with 70 to 80 consults in, in, in one day, as well as all the, the days, administrative birds and prescriptions, etc. I, ne I nearly gave up general practice. And the only way I found, um, uh, or one of the main ways that helped, was actually using pre-filled templates, uh, pre-prepared -pre templates, in order to give rapid responses to patients once reading their, their e-consults. Um, uh, and again, this is something you'll have to discuss within your practices around uh, whether or not it's acceptable, but particularly for patients I know um, and patients that I've dealt with a lot over time, um, I, I'm very frank and open when I uh, reply back to them uh, and I say, actually, we're really super busy. We're in the middle of COVID. Uh, 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 there's an, uh, a spike in cases. We are inundated. I may not have time to call you, but uh, here is my reply to your issue. Uh, always give the patient an option to reply back, uh, especially if you're replying back with AccuRx. So click that box uh, at the end of the AccuRx um, uh, uh, window that allows the patient to respond. Uh, so, so, so in my view, it's always about giving patients options rather than shutting the door, but be honest with them. Uh, and that's what I think we've done in our practice. We've been very honest. Uh, we are saying to patients there may not be time to ring you back, but if I've missed anything, please let me know. Uh, we'll continue the conversation. And actually, yeah, if we've missed something, we're very happy to phone you, very happy to see you. But the majority of the time, patients are actually happy to correspond via two-way text messaging about their issue. And if you feel that's a way for you to save time and sanity and deal with more queries, and more requests from patients, then then great. Um, so so that's kind of the, the the top tip I'd say for me for from the last couple of weeks. Um, and Shankar, I'm not sure if you're coming on to templates. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll yeah, yeah. come into a little bit. Okay, so thanks. Alex. So we've probably got about 15 minutes left. So as usually when we talk about communication, we do a bad job because we're going to have to now watch it a little bit. But the thing I want to highlight is at this webinar, we consult, we're consult, focusing on e-consult. So when we think about communication, there's lots of ways we could communicate with the patient. 
some of those other ways we'll probably cover in other um, sessions like this. Um, I want to pick up one quick comment from Sarinda on the chat, which is um, we know about quick counting appointments, video consultations and e-consults e are both counted as online consultations. A telephone consultation wouldn't be counted as an online consultation. So when you count in, you know, if you're trying to hit your contract or target, count video and um, e-consults generally. I mean, you can count lots of other ways of doing online consultations using other systems, but those are the two main ones. OK, time for a little breather. So, you know, um, we're a crazy world, aren't we, at the moment? There's lots of things happening. So let's just see when we think about online consultations. Um, you know, this is new for us. What what how can we do it? What are the different systems? What if we wanted to ditch e-consult today? How else could we do it? Yo, homies, Z Dog MD coming with the Z Dog Academy episode one, kicking it medicine 2.0 style. Today we're going to talk about communicating with patients electronically. Now, a lot of homies will do this through an electronic medical record because of HIPAA and all that. Why use an EMR that's expensive and clunky when you've got Gmail? Gmail is the bomb. I mean, what could be more secure? Let me show give you an example here. Let me say, dear Billy. Your HIV test was positive. OMG, Dr. Z. And send. Oh, oh snap, I forgot a subject that's easily fixed. You've got AIDS. Send. Perfect. Totally clean, totally smooth. What could pop? Uh, wait a minute, I just realized something. I think Billy's HIV test was negative. Not to worry, we can handle that. We just go back and cover our tracks. Send us another email here. And uh, <sighs> dear Billy, damn autocorrect, winky face smile, your HIV test is neg. Smiley face, lol. Dr. Z. Oh, and to cover our tracks, we'll just keep it real here. I sent from my iPhone. Pardon typos. And sent. Oh, snap. Forgot the subject. You don't have AIDS. L O L. Send. Folks, medicine is disrupting itself with technology. This is how we roll 2.0. Wait for episode two. I'm out. So, you know, um, I thought that was absolutely fine, but then uh, Phil Martin pointed out there's lots of things I didn't spot about what was wrong with that. But being serious about this, this is totally new to us, online consultation. And I think we just got to think of that about the patient's experience. So what if they've completed a really long consultation, filled up tons of template, and we give them a very brief answer, computer says no. How does that feel for them? You know, this is an art form, it's a skill, um, and we've got to think about how we do it. So like I said, there's probably lots of different products you could use to do this. I'm quickly just flagging the the um, the method by eConsult. So you know, you hit the toolbar link that you've hopefully put on your system one. You can access their platform, and your frustration starts there because you've got to add in a pin from the the document. When you look at the document, you've got to struggle to find the pin, and there's that pin, and then you type it in, and then you can write your own message. If you look at their presets, they're pretty awful. I doubt you're going to find any of those presets that great. And when you write your message, um, that's tedious, that's time consuming. You can add up a file and then you can send it to the patient, but you've got to copy it to your clipboard. So you click a button to, to copy it and then you've got to paste it into your record. So tedious. I think the vast majority of us are not using this to respond to the patient. But here's the problem. This is the only method that if you use eConsult knows that you've responded back to the patient. If you do any other method, you'll get chaser emails from eConsult saying, you know, um, have you responded to that patient? So it is frustrating. And I do think this functionality could be better, um, but this is the current method. Um, when you do respond to that patient, just like we saw in that video, we don't know if that patient is genuine. So I'm going to go back a step. There's something you're going to start to see on the report. If you look at the top right on here, it says here patient ID verified by NHS login. So at the moment, um, all your all our patients can hit that website, hit that banner, submit an e-consult, and there's no login, there's no checks, they could be anyone. 
if they go through the NHS app and they use the NHS login, they are actually verified. You know that that is who they are. The NHS login is also going to be rolled out through our practice website as an option. It's not forced onto the patient, so it's not a barrier. If they haven't set it up, they can just go through like as normal. But look out now, because if you see that verification, you really do know that there's a high that this is verified. This is this is as pretty secure as you can get that this came from the patient if they created the NHS login. So I think our systems and process, you may feel more comfortable to respond when you get the verified uh, verification than if you didn't. But I think just be mindful of that communication risk and be mindful of brief messages, poor messages and, you know, um, and the errors in the messages. So as a practice, you may want to build up a template of responses. Tedious, but maybe it's a Word document that you cut and paste into this if you're using this platform. Um, and this is reminding you about that safety net, that that patient is getting a, a reminder to say, look, um, what if you don't get a call to respond back? So even if you do muck up your processes, the patient will probably contact you and you'll get that chaser email from eConsult. But one option you may want to consider as a practice is if you're not going to use the eConsult platform to respond, do you build in a process where you send some response via that platform just to close off the chasing from eConsult? So if your admin staff are booking it into a slot with a doctor, do they if you just quickly send them through that platform, say, dear patient, um, thank you for your consult. We will call you back. We'll be contacting you back in XX number of times or days. And you've just closed it. And is that a, a tedious step? But is that better than having to, when you get the incoming chaser email, that you're having to check into the system, did we respond or not to the patient? I think it's for you to the practice to decide. But what we have done is that we have raised the company that it is tedious, that could we have the ability to switch it on and off? That would be helpful. OK, so for consideration really at this stage, some general top level principles here about this, you know, think, you know, if you get multiple contacts on the e-consults for the same problem, is something going wrong? Do we just need to see the patient or do something differently? Um, think about those turnaround uh, stock answers and responses. The, the e-consult would say that all children should get a phone call back, that it's not that they don't recommend that you close it remotely. I think you can make your own decisions whether you follow that completely. There may be some really simple e-consults. You know, it could be just a repeat prescription request that you just do not need to call the patient. But as a standard approach, that's what the company um, says. And like Alex said, the amount of time it takes to do an e-consult gets less and less as you get more and more experience. Um, and as your, as your clinicians move away from the instincts of just calling the patient each time, if they trust the system more, they may feel that they can close more without even contacting the patient. And we're not going to go into this into detail, but there's lots of ways and lots of different platforms that we could use to respond to the patient. And we're going to pick this up in other webinars. But as a as a shot, you've seen that eConsult longer replies and they know that e, um, if you use that platform, eConsult knows you responded. Um, we will pick up things like AirMid, the pros and cons of that in another webinar. And then Accurex will pick up about the pros and cons of that as another webinar. But I think these are the main ways that we are responding to patients um, when they've got an e-consult. Um, so again, a few subtle tips here. Remember we said about empathy, full sentences. Think about what they've put in and how you respond back. Um, think about coding. You know, we're probably not coding lots of data that's useful in the eConsult. Do we need to think about systems and processes in our practices? Is there useful data there that we can capture? Um, so some thoughts here. And we've, we've, we've picked up on a lot of these tips and, th and these slides will be shared out as well. So this is a, 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 a promotional change in the practice how you realign health seeking behavior, you know, how do you align some of your chronic disease processes? We've mentioned about blood pressure checks. Do you do all your home blood pressure checks and responses via eConsult as your standard process? And some of these dilemmas and problems, you know, eHubs, what do we do? Should we do it? Um, what are the problems with that? Those different functionality, the Northwest London IT team have rolled out exponential e to allow staff to have um, ability to connect to system one on their personal devices um, with smart card enabled functionality. Can e managing e-consults e remotely help when your staff are forced to isolate? Is it another piece of work that they can do? And you've seen the biggest problem here is that there's a lack of interoperability in e-consult and that it's a very much out of a box solution. You can't really change it or tweak it that much, which is great because it's easy to roll out and launch in your practice, but not so great because you can't tweak it so easily. And that's a list of e resources. 
so we've come to the end and I think we've only got about five minutes left um, and I'm keen to just try and pick up any of the um, problems that we feel we're not tackling. Um, so first of all, when it says here, um, I've got Anna saying they don't send chases for all ecosols, just uh, just some. If the patient, I think if the patient clicks on their side that they've got a response, you won't get a chaser. So I think there's a functionality at both ends. So if eConsult doesn't say that you've used the platform to reply and the patient hasn't said that they've got a reply, you'll get a chaser. Also, the patient said that I think that's another reason why you can get variability. Um, the second thing, and, and when we say unharsh, when you said you aren't getting chases, just double check. Um, I mean, I mean, you may not be, but they would um, check your admin staff aren't actually processing these email replies or just ignoring them. Um, and they're not aware that um, there's, they're, they're meant to check. Um, any other um, questions? Um, how do you find the template for recording response? So the, the e eConsult Lite templates are published now in System 1. So if you type in, you should find it. You may even want to put a shortcut to it on your toolbar if your staff are going to use it a lot. Um, you may not even like it that much. You may want to use it as a starting point, or you might want to feed back to the Northwest London IT team about can we take that template forward? Are there components that we can build into our online consultation template? Uh, Shankar, so I think yeah. Harj meant the uh, the eConsult recording template, uh, which I, uh, okay. uh, I was wondering if it's actually finished yet. Yeah, that's in yeah I think it's in, um, I don't know if it's built on the call, but you can, I think you can find it through auto consultation. If you go to the auto consultation list, it's okay. what, you can find it through there. Um, it's on that list and if you type it, but that's definitely published. Okay. Um, and if you want any changes or suggestions to it, you just have to, if you email the service desk with a reference to the template, they can take that on board. Great. Any other, um, what would be also useful for us is obviously when we're trying to wait the presentations, and this is the first one in a series, it would be really helpful if there's any chat comments or emails to the team about how you would like the emphasis and the pitch of the to the audience for this these sessions. OK, I think um, I think we've covered then. Um, I don't know if anyone feels there's any chat comments we haven't covered or whether we can close. I think most of it is uh, is answered now. Um, uh, so yeah, any more questions that the group has, feel free to email us, uh, either myself or, uh, or Shankar on the email that you can see on the screen. And we're running uh, further webinars um, on various related topics. Um, so, so if there's anything really pressing that hasn't been answered, it can be raised in future webinars. OK, so we're going to close and just literally as this as this finishes immediately, I'm going to upload to the files of teams um, the slides and that process guide. So please just look for that um, straight away if you want to download it. So it, we, we can probably circulate it through email and other ways as well, but I'm going to upload it straight away. OK, well, thank you for your time. I really hope this has been some help and um, thanks to everything that everyone's doing with the world of COVID and eConsult. Okay. Thanks, everybody.